Continuing on with the study of respiratory system, the next is going to be lung relation. Now, there's two important things about lung relations that's discussed in first aid. Uh, the right lung and the left lung is really divided into, um, in, divided not symmetrically. It's an asymmetric division. So there is three lobes on the right side and two lobes on the left side. Now, the top two sections are called the superior lobe, obviously. Uh, it's not very... Uh, creative. Uh, the middle lobe in this one is called the middle lobe and the lower lobe is going, going to be the inferior lobe. Okay, For the left side this is going to be uh, superior lobe and this is going to be inferior lobe. Now the thing is um, the right bronchus is short and more straighter than the left bronchus. That's why aspiration is very commonly seen in the right lung than the left lung. Now, aspiration can happen in two different positions. One is, is, is being upright, so let's say sitting upright, and the other is lying down. So if it's sitting upright, then where will the aspirate go? They both go to the inferior lobe. So they both go to the inferior lobe. But when we are lying down, it's going to go to the lower portion of the inferior lobe and when we're sitting upright it's going to go to the upper portion of the inferior lobe. The other thing that is mentioned under lung relation which is also interesting is that there is a nice mnemonic called R-A-L-S, RALS. R is going to be for the right lung and L is going to be for the left lung. Okay, And A stands for anterior and S stands for superior. Okay. So now, um, this is in relation to what? This is in relation to pulmonary artery. So the right bronchus and the left bronchus in relationship to pulmonary artery. For the right side, the pulmonary artery is going to be anterior to the right lobe, to the right bronchus, sorry. So the pulmonary artery is going to be anterior to the right bronchus. And for the left lung, uh, it's going to be superior to the left bronchus. That's why the S is there. Now the next topic is the diaphragm structures. The first thing we need to be talking about is the 8, 10, and 12. The diaphragm is perforated at different uh, at, at different level of the vertebra. At T8 some structures come out, at T10 some structures come out, and at T12 some structures come out. So let's talk about that. At the level of T8, what count what comes out is going to be the IVC. Inferior vena cava comes out at the level of T8. At the level of T10, we have um, esophagus. We have esophagus and vagus coming out at the level of T10. Now, and at the level of T12, there is going to be ATA. Okay, A is for aorta. T is going to be for thoracic duct and the other A is going to be for A zygous vein. Okay, these are the different structures coming out from the diaphragm. Now next we want to talk about C3, C4 and C5. These gives innervation to the diaphragm and together it's called the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve uh, supplies the diaphragm and we all know about the mnemonic C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. Next we want to talk about the muscles of respiration that is still on page 560. Now there is two types of respiration muscles or there's two types of respiration sorry our breathing one is called the quiet breathing the other is the exercise right the muscles in exercise so in quiet breathing, for inspiration, we are using the diaphragm. For expiration, we know this is passive. But what about exercise? What about um, inspiration? For inspiration, I use a mnemonic called SES. S is for scalene. The other is, is going to be for sternocleidomastoid. And the E in the middle is going to be external intercostals. Okay, Those are going to be for inspiration. And what about expiration? 
For expiration, I use the mnemonic ROTI. R O T I. R is for rectus abdominis. O is for obliques. T is for transversus abdominis. And I is going to be for internal intercostals. Now those are the muscles of breathing.